When I look at a map, my eyes often go directly to the areas where the fewest roads mark the paper. For most of us, we travel to get somewhere. But for us this summer, we're trying to make the journey as big a part of our experience as the destination. The northernmost panhandle of Idaho is one of those less traveled places. We visited the Nature Conservancy's Ball Creek Ranch Preserve in the beautiful Kootenai Valley. Ball Creek Ranch is a 2,000 acre preserve where conservation is accomplished by working with local farmers, ranchers, and logging interests. Now, while some of the preserve is managed as a restored wetland, other parts are responsibly used in ranching and farming operations, which are monitored to assure that the diversity of life is sustained here. Justin Petty is the Inland Northwest Land Steward for the Idaho chapter of the Nature Conservancy, and he lives and works at the preserve, helping to maintain the delicate balance between man and nature. The Ball Creek Ranch Preserve is approximately 2,000 acres. When the Nature Conservancy purchased it, um, it was a, approximately 2,300 and um, we sold 300 of the forested acreage to uh, a timber company, Crown Pacific at the time. It's now owned by Forest Capital Partners. Um, but at that time when we sold the property, we had an agreement to purchase a conservation easement on the property. So that gives us the ability to work with Forest Capital Partners to manage the timber on the property and to come up with a, uh, an appropriate timber management plan that not only recognizes their needs as a timber company, but also recognizes our needs um, as they pertain to wildlife habitat. Using a collaborative science-based approach, the Nature Conservancy teaches people how to preserve wildlife habitat while using the land responsibly. Currently, we have preserves throughout the state that we own, but we also um, work with private landowners to facilitate um, wildlife habitat needs on, on private property. This all-inclusive, non-confrontational approach to conservation is part of what brought Justin to the Nature Conservancy in the first place. But Justin learned to love the outdoors at an early age. So as a child, my father um, took me hunting and fishing and really instilled those values, um, which I think a lot of people place different values, have different uh, uses and, and get different things from wildlife habitat and from nature. And uh, so for me, that was established at a very early age and, and something I'm really grateful for and something that definitely influenced me later in life. After studying natural resources in college, Justin worked at various natural resources jobs from Colorado to New Mexico. But I always wanted to get back to the mountains, get back to the rivers. And so uh, when I started looking, I really became interested in the Nature Conservancy, not just because of their mission statement to preserve, to preserve the diversity of life on earth and the habitats they need, but also because of the methods in which uh, they went about achieving that mission. Um, so they work collaboratively with farmers and ranchers and resource users because they recognize that um, that's an important part of creating uh, sustainable wildlife habitat, is finding that common ground between the user and the wildlife needs. And that's what brought Justin to work for the Nature Conservancy at the Ball Creek Ranch Preserve. The Conservancy uh, purchased the property from the, the uh, LaRue Family Trust. At that time, um, the Blackhurst family was living on the property and operating a farming and uh, ranching uh, operation here at the, at, the, at the property. When TNC came on board, uh, we began work with NRCS, Natural Resource Conservation Service, um, and Ducks Unlimited to establish the wetlands on the north end of the property. And that's been a project that has been our prim primary focus here on the property uh, for the, about the past eight or nine years. It would have historically uh, been all wetlands um, of varying degrees, and it would have provided habitat for not only waterfowl or those, those creatures that we associate with wetlands, but it would have also provided habitat for um, sturgeon rearing uh, nursery type habitat, as well as other aquatic species that use the river, um, would have used that, those areas for, for nursery habitat. Luckily, the Nature Conservancy isn't alone in the huge task of restoring wetland habitat in the Kootenai River Valley. There are three different entities that have re-established wetlands in the valley, and that is um, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, uh, the Idaho Fish and Game, to the north, and here sandwiched in between that is TNC's project at Ball Creek Ranch. 
we've restored 500 acres of wetlands here on the property through WRP grants. Those are wetland reserve program grants that are available through the Natural Resource Conservation Service, which is a federal agency that administers uh, farm aid grants. We've put a pump into place that will facilitate um, water being pumped into that cell out of our primary drainage ditch uh, before it goes into the river. Then it, can then it can flow through our wetland cells and uh, filter out some of the chemicals associated with uh, agricultural production on the property. But even with so much work being done in wetlands restoration here, there are still many challenges. While it may not function as it, as it did historically with the meandering flows and the associated wetlands uh, because of the diking levying systems associated with agriculture and the flood control uh, and energy needs associated with Libby Dam, it still is, a, is a, a functioning system on some level and it still provides for a host of wildlife habitat needs. We decided to explore the area, taking a few short hikes and visiting the nearby Kootenai National Wildlife Refuge. The day was perfect. Wildlife abounded and the kids found shimmering mica-studded rocks in an ice-cold stream. Today, at least, we could see the Nature Conservancy's work in action, showing that humans and wildlife can coexist, blurring the line between wild and tamed lands. This part of North Idaho is a lot less traveled than much of the state, and it has a lot to offer um, a visiting tourist. We agree. But what do you do for fun around here on a Saturday night? So I was coming up out of, a, of, out of one of our drainage ditches last year, and I peep over and I notice a baby moose underneath its mother, and I'm like 30 feet from it, um, and I can just see its ears twitching back and forth. And so I'm like, oh, this is not a good situation. So I uh, try to back up. Well, the moose charges me uh, with its front feet out in front of it, and I, I scream, and uh, it stops its charge and runs back to the baby, and so I make it about another 40 feet just frantically running through the pasture, and uh, then it's on me again. It charged again, so once again, I waved my arms around and, and acted frantic, and, and it left me alone and charged a third time while I tried to make it over to the vehicle, but it was a pretty scary moment. <laughs> ah, the WWMWF. Worldwide Moose Wrestling Federation? Wow. Anyway, after a day at Ball Creek Ranch Preserve, we could see that it takes dedicated, knowledgeable people like Justin Petty to make organizations like the Nature Conservancy thrive. Our primary goal is the preservation of the diversity of life on this planet. Um, the only planet that any of us are aware of that sustains life. And it's not just the preservation of the diversity of that life, but the preservation of the habitat that that life needs to, uh, to sustain itself. Over the next few days, we made our way to the western terminus of our travels, the James Family Ranch on the Columbia River in Washington State. We plan to stay a month here, making a base camp along the river and making trips out from here. While the Chevy Tahoe Hybrid and A-Liner Ease Camper were helping us to get almost 19 miles per gallon, we still had to stop for gas once in a while. Still, we were glad not to be traveling like this guy. Yep, that's a bus pulling a non-hybrid SUV. Must have gotten a great rate on that second mortgage. And that's it for this episode. Keep up with us on our blog at greenfamilysummer.com and stay tuned. The adventure continues on Green Family Summer.